what is Le Normand? It's a 36 card oracle deck. Uh, very different to tarot. Uh, it was created in about the, it was created in the 18th century in, in Germany actually. And uh, it, was, it was really a, a game as well, because you'll find on the, on the older cards, you find uh, playing card insets in a sense too. And, and, and was, but it was also used as a divination oracle as well too. But it was, it was I think the 18th century, uh, in Paris, there was a, lady, a woman called Madame Lenormand who uh, became very famous. She, was, she, used to, she had her own deck of cards and she actually read for Napoleon and predicted his divorce from Josephine. And she, it, she became famous with that too. And somewhere along the line, uh, they attached her name to the deck, Le Norman deck, and it's mm. sort of, and it it's been around, but it's sort of been in the background for for a very long time, and and I think about twenty years ago, suddenly it started to make an appearance and a and, and an interest in in it too, and then uh, since then uh, it's really taken off, uh, and you find uh, a lot of beautiful decks created. Which are really wonderful, and also the lovely thing about the the Lenormand is to is the simplicity of the images, which make it very very interesting. Because I I because where uh, where tarot is very complex and full of a lot of very deep symbols, uh, Lenormand cards are very simple because you get images like a a tree and a fox, a man, a woman, lilies, a crossroads in, in a sense too. And 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 really, when you when you work with uh, Lenormand, what you really do is to learn to create a vocabulary of meanings around the cards to sort of get a, an essence of the energy of a card too. But my style of teaching is much freer. To mm -hmm. I, I do work with the with the original uh, meanings that are associated with the cards too. But I like to encourage an, a very in, intuitive approach to because even although you learn certain meanings of the cards you still have to use your intuition in terms of the context of the question being asked and even although the cards are very simple very easy to relate to uh, they do allow for very simple readings to but also allow for incredibly complex and very deep and profound readings as well too but I also like to encourage the students to work more personally with the cards to like select a card in the morning for the day, say the clouds, for instance, which is a card yeah. of uncertainty and, and, and things like that too. And then at the end of the day, reflect back on the day and say, how did that energy play out for me today? Because by creating a personal association deepens your connection to the cards too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to share some of the images of cards? I'll just share that with you. A typical three card reading. My interpretation or explanation of each part is the, the, the card, the past card, like which is the rider here. That's the energy the person brings into the situation because you cannot, you, you, you are already in the present moment. You cannot be, you cannot be in the past too. So, so uh, I always see the past card as the energy the person is bringing in. The middle card is kind of where they are now. And the future card is what does the person want? How is the first person projecting their energy towards mm. the future? And it's also it also depends very much uh, on the context of, you, you need to create a context when you ask. So you need to ask a question too. So um, it, people who are watching this who've never seen Lenormand cards before at all, they might be wondering if the playing card insets are important at all, specifically these two that have people on them. So uh, what, what would you tell someone who's new to the deck about those? Initially, in the beginning stages, I don't, I don't work with the pip cards so much uh, because uh, there, there's something interesting to add at a much later date. I think I think th they complicate the meanings in the beginning while you're getting to use court cards on the other two cards are something that I do introduce because because uh, they can introduce the um, somebody in the reading another person mm -hmm. in the reading when you do a reading you start in the in in the the first card which is the rider the, 
which is the writer's a card that it's an energy that heralds change. It can also represent somebody new coming into a situation too. Uh, it can be somebody setting off on a journey. And, and if you actually look at the imagery in this card too, I mean, he's there's a house behind him. So he's he's setting off on a journey, which, which is kind of leading him onto, this, onto the next card, which is showing a lot of uh, different possibilities. So, mm -hmm. so if somebody was, it was a reading and somebody was asking maybe about making a change in their life or something, or maybe starting a new job. So the, the, uh, the writer would kind of indicate, yes, the, the, this person is ready now for, to make changes in their life. Do they kind of want to move ahead to, but uh, they're not quite sure of where they, what they quite, what they want to do that having to make an important decision to, but the interesting thing too, is the way the energies move from one card to the other because you've got the child so the child card would represent that somebody's wanting something that's new that's different maybe something they've never tried before too but also send uh there's a sense of naivety there so you know, on the one hand uh it could it could also mean that the person could be quite hesitant about something but i also i i, I just get an intuitive feeling that maybe what's initiated this whole process was was the person remembering something from their past maybe something mm -hmm. that they once thought they'd like to do or or that that they kind of shelved and put aside yeah and now thinking i've been doing this for so long i really need to make changes in my life too so so that they stuck at this point because having to make an important decision because they could go they could go the traditional way kind of in a similar world but I also get a feeling that maybe somebody's sort of thinking okay I had this dream one day maybe to start my own business and stuff too so uh, there's that it's, it's to revive that impetus that the person had initially you know the excitement and to kind of let that re revisit inside themselves but at the same time also quite cautious because it's something new it's kind of breaking away from what they know so do you want to show the grand tableau and what that looks like because that's kind of like the ultimate <laughs> yeah and, and and usually when i show to the students the first time <laughs> and explain it to them this mask it's like, <laughs> it it, it looks very daunting uh but it's actually <clears throat> the grand tableau is actually very interesting spread too because it's you use you use the entire deck there's two there's two versions there's the, the this the particular grand tableau we it's four rows of nine and then there's a petty tableau in which you use four rows of eight and then there are four cards at the bottom but i find this one uh, a, a lot easier to use this reading particularly it i would think it was for a female a woman i would always uh once i've laid out the spread i would i would look for where she appears in the spread too but what something i also do is to ask uh them what areas particular areas of their life they would like to focus on because this this actual reading gives you that opportunity so if if, if they were going to asking about love you'd look for the heart card so you, you so you'd make a note of that uh if they asked about their home situation, you could, there's the house card. Uh, if they asked about finances, it's the fish card. Uh, if they asked about work, uh, that would all depends the kind of work they do because uh, there are different uh, cards that represent different aspects of work too. I, I mean, the fox to me is a card for somebody who's sort of more self employed employed somebody who's sort of entrepreneurial the the uh, anchor could be somebody with a much more because it's the anchor is about stability so it could be something with with a much stable job too so 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 in this say in this particular reading the person was asking about uh, love uh asking maybe about uh n somebody new coming into their life so that would be the heart the man the fish they're asking about their finances maybe their home and i mean that's quite a lot and maybe asking about i mean there's the tree which is which often is referred to as a health card too but i don't i don't encourage people to do um 
medical diagnosis really but it could be more of a card about well-being in a sense too so so the first thing that we, when you when you uh, lay out the grand tableau is to look for the the person themselves to and in this case it's the woman card and there she is so there's nothing behind her so th the row that she's in the mountain the clouds and the tower is the present moment that's so in so she so this would indicate that this person is at a, a new beginning in her life because usually if if, if for instance uh the, this reading was for a man and he's right on the other end so that so that so it, all everything behind him would indicate would relate to his past that would be his yeah. uh, and that would be what's coming so it would be kind of the ending of a situation too so looking at the woman uh there kind of and and then i'm not i'm not going to interpret uh, all the cards too but I, I'm, what i what i will do is look at find the cards like the love the heart card which is about love and 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 i'll show you which is the card up here and then to to relate the card to her you you go up to the the the, the row where that card is so it's the mountain mm -hmm. and you go down and the ring mm -hmm. yeah so the, so so the rings about commitment and stuff and the mountain is kind of an obstacle too so maybe this is would be giving me an indication that somebody would maybe find that uh maybe marriage or or some sort of commitment which would be quite a challenge and then we looked at the the man and there's a man in her future there's somebody here and what relates to him her him to her is you go along and it's the dog, uh, which is lovely, which is sort of qu quite a very loyal person too, which is very nice too. And the tower, the towers, the towers, the tower card is, is often a card about authority and stuff too, but I also see the, the, the tower card as aspirations. And I also see it as kind of uh, when somebody kind of withdraws a little bit into their own little the love energy that connects it to him is the mountain and the the ring so in a sense to, to me that was very much about commitment so that would sort of maybe give me an indication that maybe this person has had not had very good relationships the first three cards in in, in a grand table are, are also very important cards too because they kind of set the whole thing into motion the mountain here is the energy that's set into motion so this is about obstacles this is uh, about I could think of about endurance, but in a kind of a way, uh, it's conquering something as well too. What the the second card is always what the person is seeking, and in this case, it's the key. And the key is a is a, is a lovely card. It's a very straightforward image. The key the key opens up doors. It's looking for a solution in in a sense too. And the third card kind of tells you uh, what kind of a journey the person's going to have too. And 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 to me, what these three cards are indicating is that at the moment, the, all the obstacles in this person's life is, is huge, and and they're not quite sure. But they're kind of looking for a solution. And I think I'll. And the coffin is usually about things ending, because if if nothing ends, nothing new begins. Too. So, hmm. but if when you look at actually look at the image of the coffin there, I mean the coffin is half draped, but there's a side of it that's open here and 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 yeah, yeah. that would be what come new and the card that leads on to that is the bouquet which is a card about appreciation and surprise and goodness too and maybe it's, it would be indicating that the person needs to appreciate themselves more i mean i love the bouquet card because it, as it's usually about it's about a gift and stuff but i i, I always think of a bouquet is imagine when we create a bouquet we select mm -hmm. yeah different flowers to symbolize different and if you think that if this person is maybe having difficulty in relationships and stuff and wants a, a change you know you gather different aspects together to create a bouquet of their own making that is that is something that is good for them because if you if you read further on here in the line interesting after that comes the the crossroads making choices about love and then the bear is about being being strong and then the garden is about 
going out in the world and then the stars is about all possibilities too. So, I mean, to me, that would be something very much that I, I, I would talk about to kind of help, you know, the, show the person kind of yeah. the possibilities of a way forward. Always the magical thing about giving somebody a reading is that moment when you, you sit in front of the client and you say to them, okay, just give me a moment and you, whatever you need to do, you never know what you're going to talk about. And, and to me, that's always the magic. What, what am I going to find today? What am I going to be shown? And, and to me, that's the real authentic connection that you make with a sitter. Oh, such good advice, Jeffrey. Thank you. Uh, it's it's okay. lovely to see you. And thank you so much. All right. Have a nice good day. Nice to see you. Bye. Bye-bye.